Does it seem a long time since the Blackpool game? <laughs> it does. Um, you know, and it's just one of them things. No one's prepared for it. And it's all right. Hindsight, you know, we haven't played for a fortnight, so you could say, oh, well, why didn't they shut down football for a fortnight? It doesn't work like that. I know there were seven League One games off this week, but we're, we're in a very unprecedented, or we're in very unprecedented times. And um, it's just a case of muddling along and trying to get it right as best you can. Um, and the one thing that I think people are missing missing the point of a lot because you get het up in your own life and obviously this is our livelihood football but people are dying of this disease you know, continually they, it's getting worse rather than getting better at the moment um, and I think on the forefront of everyone's mind should be the, you know, the families of people who are dying the people who are dying the, the people who are on the front line the doctors, nurses and numerous you know, carers who are having to battle this this disease and you know football should come way down the list on that when you think about the priorities as I said and it is my life and you know I am obsessed with it but sometimes you have to have a reality check. Did that help you because Christmas is suddenly such a busy time it's a big football time it's usually fans and loads of games and everything did it help thinking like that did it help you take a step back from it all? Yeah I think you'd have to you know and I think the one thing that we've got to do is we've got to do everything that's right for the people of the country and we've got to try and, you know, beat this whatever way we, however way we can now. Hopefully with the, the advent of the, of the vaccines, um, we, we could get back to the semblance of normality. It should be known, I think probably most people involved in football will agree, it's not the same on the fans. As much as you try and be professional, you, you try and prepare right, and we do. And, you know, and we've played some really good football this season, as, as of other clubs as well. But it's still not the same, and I don't think it ever will be. I mean, it's such a shame because your because Accrington Sands fans haven't been able to see Matt Butcher. They all the signings from the summer they haven't been able to see them live. Is it? It's disappointing for them as well. It is, and you know I feel for them. You know the, you know, f I know myself that you know I'm a football fan, and I know a bigger part of pain in my life going up, and you know how much it, it is, you know how much this club means to the community as well. So it is difficult, and then you'd have to, you know, factor in all the other things, you know, the the loneliness of people, the, the depression, the, you know, the mental health problems that, that can magnify in these situations. And football sometimes is a release from that. And so, you know, I, 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 see, I see how important it is in people's lives, but let's get things in order. And the, the, the first thing is people living. And, you know, people are dying, you know, of this... And this new stain is, is affecting people differently as well. So we have to control our first before we worry about football, I think, anyway. Are you, but on the football level, are you worried with how many games still been in the Papa John's Trophy, all the build-up of games now? Yeah, I am. You know, and I think it was worked out. It was born every four four days. Now we've got to play. We've got to get the fixtures in in time. And that doesn't account for any um, weather-related postponements. And, you know, you've only got to look at, today you know a lot of, a lot of places covered in snow and uh, frost into the ground so I think it's very rare that you get a season in the AFL where games don't get called off for weather uh, particularly in League 1 and League 2 you know we haven't got the, the benefits of the under soil eating so it is a worry and you know it's disappointing well, not disappointing but it's frustrating because we feel as though we're doing okay you know, we got into a bit of a groove of playing decent football and then that stops and and then you know we've got a really big fixture pile. I think we've got five games in hand on one, one or two teams and that's going to be difficult to get them in you know just playing Saturday Tuesdays you don't want to go to the stage where you're playing Saturday Tuesday Thursday um, you know as much as I love football and I love playing football and um, I still I think that you know the the effort that we have to put in and our lads try to put in um, and if you if you look at my managerial style, I don't really rotate. I don't really make a lot of subs. So it is a physically demanding task playing for Accrington. And you know the, the lads who are in the squad who aren't in the first team or not on the starting eleven are continually trying to force their way in. And then if they if they force their way in, they stay in. And that's physically demanding when you're doing that in training every every. Day and then you, 
you're forced into trying to, to keep that them standards up in the games. And you know, we, we pride ourselves on being very fit because we we do train really hard in the summer and then, you know, we've done it for years, myself and Jimmy and John, but as as of late. And we taper training um, towards winning matches. So everything now is geared towards playing games. So whilst that doesn't really affect us playing Monday, uh, Saturday, Tuesday, I think it could take us toll if, it's, uh, if you're getting pushed into playing three games a week. And I guess, well, there could be football here on Saturday. That would be good news if Port, if you, the game with Portsmouth can go ahead, weather permitting. Yeah, uh, you know, it'd be good for the players to get playing. Um, you know, you don't want to be going. I think we looked a little bit rusty after the, the two or three week layoff when we played against Sammy. And that's not making any excuses, you know. Tommy were better than us on the day. But uh, you don't really want to go through too many of them phases throughout the season. I think the logical solution to this is that the season will have to be extended. But then you'd have the, the problem is if it gets worse and then we have to suspend football. I was banging the drum last year about not going past the 30th of June because I don't think you can. And I think possibly something should have been put in the start of this year or start of the season where contacts were automatically extended till the season finished rather than the 30th of June because that is a potential minefield again that we're facing. Um, and you know, with the advent of the Euros as well, this this uh, this year, you know, lots of Championship teams will be will be a lot of players playing in the Euros. Maybe not too many at League One or League Two, but there will be some. Um, and that, you know, really hampers you from from extending the League Two long. So, listen, it's not my job to to make the solutions, but I know that someone's going to find some something something. <laughs> But if you do get a game on, if Portsmouth do go ahead, it's usually a good game against them. If they're the league's joint top scorers, they've got a lot going for them. They're up in sec second place, I think. So Yeah, I mean, it's a chance for us to propel ourselves right in there, you know, by beating one of the top, top or teams in the top um, standings. And we can only just try and prepare and try and win the game. And if it's played, it's played and we'll give it our best shot. You know, we had a ter terrific performance against them last year. I know that's not many bearing on it, but... You know, we had a great win against them last year and I know our lads are desperate to play, they're desperate to win games and it's good when you've got a, a squad of players like that and they still all work hard and training, you know, we're, we're shuffling from here to there, we're training on plastic, dusted with snow, thick with snow sometimes, but the lads get on with it today, they're a smashing bunch of lads. Finally, signings, you said you'll have one in early January and then you're just going to have a look around, are you? Yeah, we've got one or two irons in the fire and you know we'll do what we, we think's right. And we'll only sign it and answer the squads, you know, we won't be signing people just for the sake of signing. But will you think about it more now because your season could go on longer and you're going to have more games? Well, the, the, the problem that you've got is the season going on longer, you could have more games, or not more games, but you know, if you win the Papa John, we will, but condensed games. You then run the risk of injuries, you know, I, I really think that something should be done about the suspensions as well because, um, you know, clubs are going to be taxed with the, with, as it is, um, it's going to be difficult for them and I think they should extend the, the, the bookings from maybe five to eight or something so that you're not losing players through suspensions as well as injuries.